how do you feel that Fallout 76 has been uh, uh, the response for Fallout 76 has been so far? Um, in general, it's been it's been awesome. Yeah. Um, you know, I've I've talked to a number of fans outside the the booth. Um, you know, been spending some time trying to get online and chat with folks and answer questions. I think the more folks find out and sort of start filling in blanks and and understanding maybe some of the assumptions or things that they you know, something worked one way that it, it doesn't actually work that way, yeah. that, that they understand, look, this is really a Fallout game in an online space where you get to play the way that you want, whether that's by yourself, whether it's with others, that we want to try and embrace that in all of the best, the most positive ways we can. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest misunderstanding of the game it's is the so far? It's the PvP thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the fact that it's always online and that, like, you know, folks are worried about um, you know, can other people really ruin my experience? Or, um, you know, is it just a, like, everybody kill everybody else? Um, and uh, we're obviously, that, that's not our intention. The goal was always, how do we take a game like Fallout, but add the element where there, there, aren't, any, there aren't any human NPCs, that all the humans are real players, and that the roles and ways in which people play the game is really up to each individual. That, mm -hmm. That if there was, um, you know, ever a nuclear war and, and the three of us uh, emerged into the wasteland in West Virginia in different places, that if you were wandering through and spotted me, that you would have to wonder, mm. like, do I hail that guy? Do I stay behind <laughs> this tree and wait? Like, yeah. how is this going to go? You know, in, in some of our, in, in all of our previous games, a lot of time, we, we almost cheat and tell you, right? Yeah. If that's a raider, he shows up as a little red thing, and we have already told you. We put this person in the world, and they're a bad person, and they're, all they're going to do is try and kill you. There's no dialogue. There's no trading. But when those characters are players, now that's all in the hands of everybody else, and it adds some tension in terms of how is this interaction going to go. Do they want to trade with me? Do they want to help me with quests? Do they need help with quests? So we just, do I want to ignore them entirely? Do we want to get into a fight and have a little fun? Um, more of that is up to the players, but done with systems in place to keep it from being abusive and not fun. You're never losing your progression. You're never losing your stuff. Um, you know, death is not supposed to be a big negative. Yeah. But what about the nukes? You, know, you can nuke each other. You, well, you can't <laughs> nuke each other. Okay. Um, you, can nu you can nuke a specific part of the world. You yeah. know, it's a massive map. It's four times the size of Fallout 4, so it's a really big space. Um, but, first of all, getting the ability to launch a nuke is not easy. You have to get a number of different code pieces to piece together yeah. to have one full code. You then have to get to the place where you go to enter that code, which is obviously not just you know open doors and walk right in. Yeah. Um, and then you target a place on the map, you can't target an individual. I can't see you running around the map and go, oh no, I want to nuke that guy. Um, so they're not easy to get. There's, they're not just going to be firing off every five minutes. And when a nuke is incoming on an area of the map, people get notified. Yeah. So you know, like, well, you can just stand there and not do anything, but you could also get the hell out of the way and then you won't get nuked. Um, so yes, it's a thing you can do, but it's really intended more, I mean, there's some quest-related stuff for the reasons why they're there, but they also create, um, uh, for a period of time, uh, a high-level zone. Mm -hmm. So that uh, area where the nuke drops is going to have some really rare resources, some of the better loot drops, some really tough creatures to fight, So it's a short, and it's obviously going to be really heavy irradiated, so you don't want to just waltz in there, you know, um, unprotected. Um, but it's a fun way to create different areas in different parts of the map that for a period of time will be these high-level zones. Yeah. How do you think that, uh, I mean, giving players the freedom uh, over the world in, in that case, how do you think they will react? Are you like anticipating that they will just wreak havoc or they will have like peaceful I am, understanding? I am anticipating the whole spectrum and yeah. how much of the whole spectrum remains to be seen. But the truth of the matter is you want some people who are in there acting as raiders. Like that, that adds raiders to the game because people want to do that. Yeah. You want people to be acting as traders. You want people who are building settlements. You want people who are nomadic and don't want to build settlements. You want the whole spectrum. You also just want it to be done in a way that, that um, certain, some people can't completely ruin other people's experience. You know, I've had people ask me, like, well, what happens if I'm wandering through the world and like, I get jumped by four other players? Well, what happens in Fallout 4 when you're wandering through the world and you get jumped by four raiders or ten or whatever the number is? Like, that stuff happens. The fact that they're a real player doesn't change. Like, yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem when it's... <laughs> 
four NPCs that we design the AI for, yeah. or ten, and it's a problem if it's four players. And you might get killed, but it, it doesn't have to be the case where, well, but then they just nonstop keep harassing me. Like, okay, well, we're working on systems and ways to handle that so that um, it doesn't always have to be that way, that it can almost be more of a challenge system. Because there's going to be times, maybe in, in the example I used before, that you and I are, are, are wandering around, and we decide to get into a duel, and we get into a fight, and it's a really good one. And right before you die, you kill me. I should have the ability to go, I want to get revenge on that guy, and get back in, and, and now I'm, and the game can say, I'll give you a little extra reward if you want to duel again. And I say, yeah, like I want, I, I should have killed that guy first, he got lucky, I want to go again, yeah. and we can do that. Or I can say, nah, I don't want to do that, yeah, he got the best of me, I'm going to go do the quest that I was doing, right? So. It's, um, it's, a, it's a way for players to sort of decide to which level they want to engage. And hopefully when done well and done positive, it's fun. Again, yeah. it's not a PvP game where, you're, you know, where it's about killing everybody else. It's about being in a post-apocalyptic world where you get to role play. There's tons of quests, there's areas to explore, there's stuff you can craft, there's things you can build, um, you know, all of those possibilities. Yeah. Would well, you have the option to choose like a more role-playing heavy server or like a... Yeah. Again, yeah. the 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 to your to your question, like, yeah. hey, what's been the tough thing to do with fans? Is yeah. like, people use a lot of preconceived notions about online games. Yeah. Like, oh, well, what if you build stuff on one server? Like, you're not building stuff on a server. Like, you're just building it in the game with that character, and so that stuff goes with that character. So, no matter where that character goes, that stuff is with them. Mm -hmm. So, if you've been playing in an instance of the world where you're doing a bunch of stuff, and then you suddenly say, oh, I see Pete is online. I'm going to go play with him in where, where he's playing, that stuff comes with you. It's not like, oh, but I don't want to leave my settlement behind in this other server. Like, it's not on a different server. You don't pick anything. You just decide, I'm going to play, and I'm either making a new character, or here's the characters I have, this is the one I want to play, and you have that stuff. Yeah. You have that character progression, you've decided to evolve that character and you know, as you level up decide what you want that character to be good at, do you want to do more of this, do you want to do more of that, again, all just like previous Fallout games, what are the things you want your your character to be good at. Yeah. How hard is it to balance that kind of like information going out, like first uh, revealing a game, then re revealing information like this, how hard is it to balance, like have some mystery left and uh, yeah, still... Well, um, I think what's hard is getting people to understand. Like, it's not fun if, A, we try and give you 100% of the information the exact moment we tell you what it is, because there's literally not very much else for us to tell you. The other thing is, like, getting people to embrace, guys, this game is constantly going to be evolving and changing. It's going to change the days and weeks and months after launch all the time based on player feedback and what people are seeing. It's going to change a lot based on the beta and people playing in the beta. It's going to change a lot in the next month with us playing it internally and continuing to try, okay, now we tried this system a little like this. Okay, now it works like this. Which one feels better? Which one feels works? Um, you know, it's a lot like going to the eye doctor and he says, you know, is which one is clear? You know, one yeah, or two. Okay, now how about now? One, you know, you want to keep finding how do we make it incrementally better all the time but at the same time, we do want to sort of reassure folks. We want to clear up misconceptions, but we also don't want to give them, look, it works exactly like this because it's going to change. It, we're, going to, we're going to keep trying, and we don't want to say, well, we told them like that, so now we can't change it because, quite honestly, people also don't, um, they don't always adapt real well to when you change something. Like yeah. when you take a single-player only game like Fallout and you say, look, it's going to be online, and it, um, you know, the people don't, aren't always comfortable with that. Some folks are interested, some folks are not, um, some folks might change their mind, but we're just going to continue to engage and talk about what it is. Um, we're really excited about the possibility, we're excited about being able to, after launch, do all kinds of things, um, all of which will be free, small DLC, big DLC, new, new um, content for the game that continue to grow and evolve based on what the community says, hey we want this, or that was really fun, can we have, can we have more of that, or can we have something else entirely? I mean, you've been in the business quite a long time. Mm -hmm. How would you say that this has changed during the years? I mean, 10, 15 years ago, you released some screenshots and that, that was it, mm -hmm. probably a blog or something. Mm -hmm. Today, people are almost demanding, like, we want to see a live stream. Media, right? yeah. all the time, yeah. information. Yeah, that's a big thing, you know, as the internet has continued to grow and evolve, social media, you know, Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, all of these things. Like, people are... Um, 
have much more ready access and information to, to what's going on. I mean, that's great. Look, that's part of the reason why I wanted us to start doing the showcase four years ago, yeah. was to communicate directly to everybody, not just fans or not just press, but to everybody to say, look, all of you can see what we're talking about. You can see it for, your, for yourself. Um, and, and we feel like, look, at the end of the day, all of this comes from a place where fans are really passionate. Mm. They're really passionate about the games they love. They're really f passionate about the franchises they love. You know, they want to be able to be excited and to be able to play things that are um, in the franchises or the games that they've grown up with or they've loved. It's totally understandable. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have two games coming up from, from Swedes. Uh, mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. Uh, Wolfenstein and, and Rage. Love our Swedes. Yeah. Uh, do you have any, like, uh, reason why you just... Yeah. No, I mean, Machine Games, you know, we work with them because, um, you know, we knew a lot of those folks when they were at Starbreeze. We really respected what they did. And when they said, look, we're going to go um, start our own studio, like it was an, the fact that they were in Sweden was secondary. It was more like, we love those guys. We think they can do an awesome job with Wolfenstein. They obviously have. We yeah. were totally right about that. Um, and in the case of uh, Rage 2, you know, we had always been interested in doing another Rage, but we didn't want... We wanted to evolve it into more of what we thought the first one could have been. Mm. Um, you know, keeping in mind, like, well, we, we acquired id after Rage was already in development and was actually being published by somebody else. So, yeah. you know, we wanted to do more of that open world player exploration, you know, like, and so Avalanche, um, we really liked and respected what they did. We thought they had a good pedigree, but if they had been in Finland or London or Iowa like it doesn't matter like we liked who they were and what they did the fact that they're right down the road from machine games has actually turned out to be really cool because machine games knowing id first person combat uh, and working with id has been able to work with them and talk to them about like you know how do you make your shotguns feel more weighty how do you get the feel of an assault rifle just right um, and so I think it's been great to have just another resource for Avalanche to talk to about doing you know id style first person combat yeah it really feels that Bethesda has like leveled up their their game uh, you started doing showcases three or four years ago mm -hmm. um, what's the what's the reason because I feel like Bethesda was the, the Elder Scrolls studio a couple of years ago, and now you're like all over the well, place. Well, I mean, yeah. in fairness, we were. I mean, yeah. when I first got to Bethesda in 1999, we were doing almost entirely third-party stuff. We were doing bowling games and drag racing games <laughs> um, and, you know, Sea Dogs and Echelon, and we made Morrowind, and that was a big hit, and we made Oblivion, and then we acquired uh, Fallout, the, the, the rights to do Fallout. Yeah. Um, but I think what really changed was when we started to look to grow and expand our internal development capacity, uh, creating Zenimax Online, acquiring id, first working with and then acquiring Arcane, um, Tango, Machine Games. Like that, That's really bolstered our internal development and you're now getting to see um, second and third games from these studios, right? Where we've yeah. gotten better at working with them, they've gotten better working within their own teams and understanding how, how to better work um, with each other and you're starting to, to see that, right? I mean, it was a bumpy road for id to get to the release of Doom with a lot of things going on and, yeah. and uh, around that studio, but they made just a, a simply spectacular game in Doom 2016. The chance for them now having done that game to come back together as a team and do Doom Eternal is an amazing opportunity because they've already figured out so many things in doing Doom 2016 that they can kind of move forward and, and grow as a studio and, and you know, as a, as a new game. It feels like there's a difference between, you know, like when you announced Fallout 4 and released it the same autumn and you mm -hmm. did the same thing with the games this year, and then also you did like these small teasers for Elder Scrolls 6 and mm -hmm. uh, Star, Starfield. Starfield, exactly. Uh, what's the reason behind that? Because we really, a lot of players really like that directness of mm -hmm. here's the game you can play it in three months um, well in the in the case of that studio and those two titles in particular um, it was sort of a unique situation where well number one a couple of years ago I, I talked to Todd about clarifying with everybody that um, Ted 6 was not going to be our next game and we had two other big games that we wanted to do first so we had already put that out there several years ago but we were very vague on what those other two titles were Folks had also found our Starfield trademark some years ago, yeah. and you kept expecting that. And so it was just in conversations with him, um, 
folks on my team to say, look, why don't we consider putting out a little bit more of a roadmap for the studio that explains to folks, here's what we're doing. Yes, we're making this game called Starfield, and here's what it is. And yes, we're going to make Elder Scrolls Six, but we have these other two games that we have to develop and make first. Yeah. So just so that folks had a better sense of where we are and where we're headed. Um, I just felt like that was Im important, particularly with Fallout 76 and expecting some folks to freak out a little bit when they find out Bethesda Game <laughs> Studios is not doing just single player, that yeah. it's going online, to be able to say, look, but the next thing that we're doing is new IP, mm. and it's sci-fi, and it's epic single player. Um, it is a single player game, period. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that also helps convince folks, like, look, this is not forevermore what we're doing. No. Like, we are gonna do a game that's just single player next time around. And yes, we are gonna get to Elder Scrolls Six, and there's gonna be a long time before we're ready to talk about what those are, because like you said, well, we, you know, we want the time between when we start to talk about it and it comes out to not be you know, two years long or three years long, um, but to just give folks a better idea of where we're headed and understanding what the studio is, is working on and trying to do. Yeah, because a lot of people are afraid of online games uh, after like loot box gate and um, the game as a service stuff like that well or just or in going into games where like look i play games online like i've dealt with people who weren't particularly fun yeah. or nice or didn't you know didn't make my experience any fun like there's fear and concern over that but we're also doing a game that's very different than a lot of the other games where people have had those kinds of experiences and we've sort of gone in understanding that we have to build ways to allow that to be minimized while still keeping some amount of, of tension and fun in seeing yeah. other people in the game. Yeah, cool, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much for coming by. Yeah, thank you.